Hey guys, you know what really grinds my gears? When teachers invent rules to prevent you from having to think. When you're doing an ice table or an equilibrium problem, and you're asked for equilibrium concentrations, there are certain assumptions you can make to simplify the equations. One of them that teachers often use is called the rule of 100. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you what that means, what it actually means, and how chemists actually do it in the real world. So, first of all, we're asked for the equilibrium concentrations of ammonia and ammonium in a 0.4 molar solution of ammonia. What chemistry is happening here? Well, they gave us Kb. That's my hint that we're going to have NH3 reacting with water, liquid water. And because they gave us Kb, I'm going to assume that ammonia acts as a base. So it steals a proton, or H plus, away from water and leaves an OH minus behind. This is the chemical reaction that the Kb of ammonia corresponds to. But what really matters here is my ice table and equilibrium expression. Remember how to make an ice table? Your initial concentration goes in the first row. Initial concentration of ammonia is 0.4. This doesn't matter in equilibrium because it's a liquid. We start with none of these because they didn't tell us that we had put any of those in to start with, just the ammonia to start. The change, we lose some ammonia, we gain ammonium and hydroxide. So our equilibrium concentrations are 0.4 minus some amount x. Our equilibrium concentration of ammonium is 0 plus x. And our equilibrium concentration of hydroxide is also 0 plus x. These are the expressions that get plugged into our Kb expression. Here's what I'm talking about. Kb is products over reactants. In this case, NH4 plus and OH minus on top, NH3 on bottom. Those are all the aqueous components from the chemical reaction. Water is not included because it's a liquid. What we do is we plug in all the numbers that we know. So our K, we're told, is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. Our NH3 is 0 0.4 minus x. And our two concentrations in the numerator are also both x. Here's where the rule of 100 comes in. As you saw in a previous video, the official way to solve an expression that looks like this one is to use the quadratic formula. But if your concentration divided by your K is greater than 100, what you can do is eliminate this minus X here. Let's try that. This is me using the rule of 100, something I personally never do, but you will have to on a test. Concentration is 0.4 and we divide it by the K, which is 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. Now, depending on how you type that into your calculator, you may want to put that in brackets, just so your calculator doesn't get confused. 0.4 divided by 1.8 times 10 to the minus five. I get 22,000. That's way bigger than 100, which means I could physically eliminate that minus x from my expression. Now, no one in the real world actually uses the rule of 100 that I know of. Real, P, real chemists just look at this and say, wow, k is really small. That must mean that the equilibrium shifts to the right just a tiny bit. So the amount that we're perturbing 0.4 by, or the amount that we're shifting away from the ammonia is really small relative to the 0.4, because that's a really small k. So small that we can probably pretend it's not even there and solve this equation. Now once we solve the equation, we'll actually take a look at the x and make sure it was small relative to the 0.4, but for now, we're just gonna chug along. The deal here is that that simplifies our expression greatly. Now, how do you undo division by 0.4? you multiply by 0 
1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0.4 on the left equals x squared. Let's figure out what that is. 1.8 times 10 to the power of minus 5 times 0.4 gives me 7.2 times 10 to the minus 6. And how do you undo square on x? The answer is square rooting the other side. And what I end up with is 0 0.0027. So the amount of shift from the left side of this chemical reaction to the right side, remember we're only putting in ammonia, is a mere 0 0.0027. That pales in comparison to 0.4. It's so much smaller. Which means this assumption we made that x is really, really, really small compared to 0.4 is OK. The analogy I like to make here is that if you're comparing x to 0.4, it's like if you start with a millionaire and he drops a dollar. Does that dollar even really matter to him? Not really. He still has $999,999 which is about a million. So x, if it's really small, doesn't matter, and you can eliminate it. Look, without doing the quadratic formula, I just solved for x. And so my equilibrium concentrations are, like we said here, NH3, the equilibrium concentration was 0.4 minus x, which we've said is 0 0.0027. On my calculator, that leaves you with 0.3973 moles per liter of ammonia. Again, take a look at how close that is to actually being 0.4 that you started with. The NH4 is X, so the equilibrium concentration of that is 0 0.0027 moles per liter. And the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide, even though the question didn't ask for it, is 0 0.027 moles per liter. Here's the last point I want to make. 0 0.0027 was insignificant relative to the 0.4. We proved that with the rule of 100. But it's not insignificant relative to the initial concentration of hydroxide, which was close to 0. This here is very significant when it's all we get in terms of forming hydroxide ions. But it's relatively insignificant when we're comparing it to the 0.4 that we start with of ammonia. That's why we're able to eliminate this x here. But we don't eliminate these x's here. We're only eliminating the x's that are added or subtracted from another value. All right, guys, that's the rule of 100. Use it to simplify your equilibrium expressions once you've plugged in the final row of your ice table. It'll really simplify the math for you. But remember, real chemists don't say, oh, I'm using the rule of 100. They just make the assumption because they know x is going to be small because the k is really small. All right, best of luck to you.